radio for the masses. Headline the best news, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. You're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Yeah, man. That's what I'm talking about. Fade to black. Bespoke radio for the masses. How you doing? Today's Wednesday, October 26th. 300 days into the new year. Just 66 days left. We are live from a bunker somewhere in downtown Burbank, California. I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network. And KGRA, the planet, I'm your also oh humble host, Jimmy Church. Yeah, man, how you doing? It's all good here. Yeah, we cut it close. <laughs> man, alive. Tonight, what a great week we've had, by the way, here. And tonight... Jason Quitt is going to be here. We're going to be talking about time travel and some other stuff. But time travel, I haven't done a good time travel show. It's been a couple of months. You know, you need a good dose of time travel, you know, to get you through the day. We're going to do that tonight. Tomorrow night, Shaw, the Loon Witch, is going to be here for our annual Shaw show. Taking your calls all night long. Get ready. It's going to be busy, just like it is every single year with Shaw. And uh, we'll bust through 100 phone calls tonight. And uh, be prepared. <laughs> She's never wrong, man. She is never wrong. And she is going to talk to you about you tomorrow night. And you know what else is cool about tomorrow night? John Rappaport is going to be here to open up the show with his No More fake newsroom with that let's move right along follow me on twitter at j church radio that's what you want to do at j church radio get her get her done man look at the dancing gifts i need them tonight more on that in just a bit completely out of my mind i feel good though i do feel good you can email throughout the show tonight jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. All right. Now, uh, oh, yeah, the sandbox is hashtag F2B. Um, where, uh, where was I going? Oh, 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 did you guys see? Let's go ahead. Let's do another round of posts because I saw this uh, as I left the set today for History Channel. And River Moon Coffee. Look at that. I saw the pictures. And I want to thank everybody over there right now. Seriously. Okay. Now, Juanita, Jeff, you guys are amazing. Uh, but I am so humbled by what is going on right now. Okay. So check out the pictures. Rita, get those posted. I want to retweet these. Really, really cool. And again, totally humbling. But uh, things are good. River Moon Coffee, the fade to black blend is just about ready to launch. 
couple of days away. And there you go. You'll understand, and it, you'll understand why I do this right here. Uh, <laughs> this stuff is amazing. And I want to thank River Moon Coffee right now. Everybody over there, thank you so much. Totally humbling. Here we go. All right. Now, check out all of our sponsors. That's how this show runs. It's really that simple. Life Change Tea got me through. And today's Wednesday. We still got a few days left in front of us. But uh, uh, getting this stuff done uh, for History Channel, I know that you have seen me post, you know, some pictures and, and, and a couple of videos. Uh, the stuff that we are doing over there is absolutely incredible. And I just, I hope that I make all of you proud. And the effort that uh, Rita and I have put into this, trying to, you know, juggle all of these things. But there's only so much time in the day. That's the first thing. Only so many days in the week. That's the next. Only so many days in the month. Right? That's just the way it is. But we're going to get through it. And Life Change Tea, Get the Tea, has been doing it for me. Uh, we have been pulling these hours uh, uh, the last couple of weeks that have just, just, you know, if it wasn't for Life Change Tea, I'd be through. Throw in the towel. But I am all good. And what, what I've been doing every single day is the Moringa drops, the olive leaf extract drops, the vitamin C drops, colostrum. And the Allison C, the Alley C. And this supplement program, everybody here, friends, family, everybody that we work with is on this program. You should do it too. Change yourself. Really, get the tea.com. Go to the specials page. Use the promo code Jimmy, either over the phone or online, and get yourself free shipping because you are a fade or not. And then, of course, the Studio Dome Fade or Not special. A hard shell case packed with a portable Bluetooth sound system, stereo, high fidelity, true wireless Bluetooth stereo technology. It's the latest and the greatest. $129 is going to get you a hi-fi stereo Bluetooth system, two SB B2 speakers in a hard shell case, $129. Can't beat it. Best deal on the net. And... Promo code JCRTWS is also going to get you the discount and free shipping. Just click on the banner over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Let's get this show cracking. I'm ready. Are you? I am. Wow. Nailed it tonight. Absolutely nailed it. Got here just in time to wish happy birthday to Seth McFarland. Today is 43 years old. And also my man. John Heater is 39, you know, Napoleon Dynamite. And Carrie Elwes today is 54, the Princess Bride. <laughs> I don't know if I have a favorite scene. The sword fighting, right, in the beginning when he climbs up the cliff and gets to the top. That's an amazing scene. Well, the, the entire cliff scene is pretty extraordinary. The entire scene when he gets to the top is <laughs> pretty extraordinary. But uh, The Prince's Pride, one of the great movies of all time, Carrie Elwes, today, 54 years old. On this day in history, 1881, the Earp brothers face off against the Clayton McClary gang in the legendary shootout at the OK Corral in Tombstone, Arizona, 1881. Seemed like it was older than that. So, like, 1880s, still getting down in the wild, wild west. Here's a fader fact for you. Tiramisu means pick me up in Italian. Bet you didn't know that. Today, very special guest Jason Quinn is here. We're going to talk about his book, Forbidden Knowledge and Time Travel. Tomorrow night, Shaw the Loom Witch is going to be here for her annual Shaw show. And, of course, John Rappaport's going to be here tomorrow night with his No More Fake Newsroom. Now, all day today, shooting we're shooting for history, right? And, uh, and 
it's like this. I'm able to think a lot, right? I mean, it's nonstop shooting, but <clears throat> with the subject matter and the stuff that we're working on, because they're not exactly inclusive, right? But it causes my brain to move. And I started thinking today because of all of uh, the people that want to talk to me about Tom DeLong have been dealing with that and and other things uh, in our little circle of friends. And it just got me thinking because it was coming at me from so many di directions about where we are today with not only disclosure, but ufology, the paranormal, uh, these fringe subjects that we discuss. Now, it's fringe to the world. Okay, I get that. It's fringe to the world. But to us, this is all front burner, real deal subjects that we talk about all the time. And where are we today? What has changed today versus where things were in 1960, in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, in the 2000s, right? Now, we had so many different uh, uh, peaks that happened uh, in the 80s. You had Bob Lazar, right? Um, 70s, Stanton Friedman. Uh, you had Roswell with Stanton and, and Don Schmidt and, and Tom Carey and, and that stuff. But, you know, certain, certain things. And before we stop right now and go, you know, but where are we today? Where are we today, Jimmy? I mean, and we've made some amazing strides. And I, I just thought to myself, I don't think that we even realize how much is out there for us to contemplate, to ponder, to consider, to investigate, to research, to discuss with our friends, read books, movies, TV. A lot has been happening, and it happens so often that I think, and we're so close to the fire, and this show broadcast every night, and, and we have Coast to Coast and, and the other stuff that we're working, that it's discussed so much that I don't even think that you can appreciate the rapid fire progress that we have had recently. Let me give you a few pointers. Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to start with this Malibu and the underwater base. And I realize that I don't talk about it much and there's reasons for that. Now I'm going to, I'm going to take things a little further for you tonight. I've got some surprises that are going to happen over the next month and they're extraordinary. I will let you know at this point and for the, oh, you know what, let's, uh, let's back up for those that don't know or need a refresher. I, I received an email three years ago and from an anonymous uh, person named Max. And in that email was a Google Earth image that is now pretty famous. And uh, not, well, not that image. Well, that one is part of the package, <laughs> but it's what we did with it. But so I get this image, Jimmy, this is interesting. I don't know what it is. What do you think? And myself and Dale Romero um, and others and Rita uh, went feet first. And what we discovered there was uh, uh, a structure. And the structure was two and a half miles wide by one and a half miles deep. It was sitting under 500 feet of water. It had a roof approximately flat, a roof shaped like an oval, 
a roof that was about 500 feet thick, supported by five columns. The columns were approximately 750 feet tall, about 400 feet at the base, and uh, it looked like an entrance, a parking structure, a giant one, no doubt, um, sitting off the coast of Malibu. And before we jumped and went crazy, because it was pretty amazing, and we didn't really know what we were looking at, but we looked up and down the coast of all of the continents around the world and Google Earth and burned our eyes until they were red and looked for something similar to this that could repeat, because then that would make it natural. And not that big of a deal. Something cool. And if it's natural, then it could be the entrance to an underground river. It could be a lot of different things. But if it's natural and it looks like that, then we've discovered something that is also pretty cool if it's natural. If it's man-made, you know, back when the the levels of the ocean were lower and 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 that would have been above the surface, which is not, you know, it would have had to have you know, a thousand feet in the other direction, but it's possible. And, and, you know, it's the coast of California. So maybe the, the ground could be at a different level, you know, earthquakes and, and whatnot. But if it's man-made, it would certainly be really, really old. And that would be cool. Is it modern? Is it some military entrance for submarines and, and built at that depth when you have a crushed depth of 500 feet? That's an extraordinary discovery, certainly. Is it alien? Is it some kind of entrance for an underground, underwater alien base? Right? Cool. Any one of those things are possibilities. But we found it. And what was really cool about that was it gave us something to go and research and check out. So we have that. Now, I've been out there. Okay, I took a research vessel out there and uh, submersibles, video, and we dropped stuff into the water. Yes, we did. We went down a long, long ways. Now, what did we see? What did we find? Well, you're going to have to wait for that. But what I want you to understand, you only have to wait about a month, so relax. But we pulled that off. It took three years. Extraordinarily expensive, but uh, it is done. So listen to me now, okay? We were there. So we have that. There's reasons why I can't discuss it further because, you know what? It's really cool, and it's all on film. Full crew, full everything, no expenses spared, just so you understand what I am saying. I want to send you pictures right now. I should be posting stuff. I could, but I can't. It's more fun to have you wait. And I just need you to just ride this out, but it's cool. Um, you're going to love it. And then we have Area 51. And one of the cool things about Area 51 recently, again, because of technology, is we have Google Earth and we have satellites now. The base has been disclosed, right? That secrecy, that part of it is is over with. So now we're able to get uh, data, really nice pictures of Area 51 that we've never had before. And just recently, there is the new hangar at Area 51. And it is big. What are they parking in that hangar? Whatever it is, it is large. It's like the biggest hangar ever constructed. It's huge. And when you look at it compared to the other stuff at Area 51, then you realize how big it is. And we have that going for us. Now, also, I got to say, whatever could park itself in that Malibu underwater base... <laughs> <laughs> it's about the right size for that airplane hangar out in uh, Area 51. So we have that. 
We've never had this before. And if you remember, you know, with Bob Lazar in 1987 and 88 and 90 um, and, and his disclosures about that in S4 and all of that activity out in Groom Lake was a big mystery, the camo dudes, right? Well, now we have the ability to look at Area 51 whenever you want. Go to Google Earth. Do it. If you do it now, if you go to Google Earth right now, those are those are fresh images. And you can go and look at Area 51. And it's crazy. But we've never had that before. And I think we kind of lose sight of how precious and how cool this really is. And then we have these recent revelations about the Black Knight satellite. There's something up there. And the reports have uh, been going on all the way back to Tesla. And the earliest forms of radar that we had picked up something in a polar orbit. We cannot forget any of this, but we have. And that polar orbit, and when it was discovered, we didn't have any satellites. They didn't exist yet. So if something is circling the Earth, it was easy to see. So observatories around the world were seeing this. It was photographed. It was seen changing directions. It made the mainstream media, or the early version of it, in newspaper articles. So it was out there. And what was interesting with the Black Knight satellite back then is that for some reason, as as crazy as this news was, in the middle of the space race, by the way, trying to get satellites up there in orbit, who was going to be first, us or the Russians? And, of course, it was the Russians. But this object was up there, and it was squashed in the media, if you think about it. It should have been the biggest news of the day, but it wasn't. And the reports of the Black Knight satellite continued, but squashed. Then. We had the shuttle photographs and the fact that those were posted up on the NASA website and then pulled down. Why? Well, we know why. It's an object up there that shouldn't be there. But it made it. We've got those images now. And then we have the Pepsi movie. Why would they do that? Tagged at the beginning of the movie, what you're about to see is real based on fact. These are facts. Crazy thing. But this is all part of our generation and what we are experiencing right now. We've got the Black Knight satellite. And then on top of that, if you th just think about this, we have the Hillary, Obama, Billary, Podesta revelations that have gone down in the last year. That alone, from those four, is enough to scratch your head. Why would they do that? There is something going on there. Podesta is tripping. His tweets were tripping. The man was an emotional wreck because he didn't do more for disclosure. D disclosing what? What is it that Podesta knows? What is it that he's talking to Bill and Hillary about right now? Obama, part of the Obama administration, and he's tweeting this stuff while those three are out there talking about it to the media, late night television, newspapers. This stuff is real. So for us, think about how exciting these times are. And then Proxima, Proxima B, the closest planet, the closest star to us, listen to me, the closest planet and star to us looks like a planet we can cruise to four light years away, literally in our backyard, four light years. All of this has happened so recently, and there's things that I have left out here. 
but this list that I put together, if you think about it, right? Eight, nine, ten bullet points has never happened in, in Fringe. Not like this and not this rapid fire. And then you throw the the real stuff on the, the fire. Go Beckley Tepe. And just this week, the new chambers, the new rooms in the Great Pyramid in Giza. You, if you think about the significance of this list of what I am laying out on the table for you, these are exciting times. We're going to look back at these last couple of years in the future and go, man, I don't know how we get bigger than this or more exciting than any of this. Malibu's going to lead to something. Area 51 in that new hangar is leading to something. The Black Knight satellite is leading to something. Hillary and Obama and Podesta and Billary and what they are doing and Tom DeLong is going to lead to something. Proxima B, the Chambers of Giza, Gobekli Tepe, and then, to top it all off, the candle in the middle of the cake, the mass sighting at contact in the desert. And normally, I would say to something like that, an event like that was, well, you know, I'm sure it was pretty cool. I wasn't there. But the video looked compelling. The eyewitness testimony sounds pretty good. But I wasn't there. But this time I was. And Rita was. And so were a couple of thousand other people. And I don't know what I saw. But I saw what I saw. And I put all of this together in one big package. And look what we have got. Are these exciting times? Is this crazy? Is this nutso stuff? It truly is. I, I, I'm, I'm just happy for all of you. I'm glad to be a part of it. Uh, Rita, the team here, everybody at Fade to Black, and how this has come along and where we are today, these are truly exciting times. I just don't want you to lose sight of that. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Jason Quit. We're going to be talking about time travel. You can follow me on Twitter at jchurchradio. Email is jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. It's Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, the planet. What's up, Fader Dots? It's pretty nuts, isn't it? It really is. We thank all of you. I'll be right back. Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. What's up, revolutionaries? It's me, Jimmy Church. Do you have an IRS or state tax issue? Well, I did, and I called national tax experts. My problems were fixed, done, Finney, and man, I got to tell you, it was a relief. National tax experts are a recognized tax office that services clients in all 50 states. It doesn't matter where you live. Give them a call. I'm telling you, they take the time to understand each and every client's individual financial status as well as their financial goals. And that's exactly what you need, my brother, when you're taking on the evil three letter. So, seriously, give them a call today at 1-877-909-5444. Again, 1-877-909-5444. Or go check out their website, www.nattaxexperts.com. That's N-A-T-T-A-X. 
E-X-P-E-R-T-S dot com. Tell them Jimmy sent you. Hi, folks. In a world of GMO, genetically modified organisms, that is, chemicals, processed foods, and a healthcare system that's unraveling like a cheap suit, it's time to prepare. God created herbs, and herbs help man. Our body can heal itself, just sometimes we need assistance. You need some help? Get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com. Our mild detox is quite powerful with its unique blend of eight different herbs. And if you're looking for more, our non GMO supplements will help you with different needs you might have. Health should be a top priority. Take care of your health naturally. Log on to get the tea. Dot com. That's get the tea dot com. Give your body a treat. Let the herbs do their thing naturally. Read all the testimonies on the website. Get the tea dot com. That's get the tea dot com. Sickness and viruses are like intruders and herbs are like warriors. Let the tea work for you. That's get the tea dot com. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Hi, this is Chase Klutzke with Fate Magazine Radio, and you're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA digital broadcast station, where the Fader Knots rock. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This Mass is Kyle Mass, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. Welcome back, Fade to Black. Truly exciting times. And I'm serious. All of you. Well, you're spoiled, number one. But number two, you're you're so close to the fire. Every single night hanging out here. You know? And you just take a step back. And you just go, holy crap. There's stuff going on. Where's it all going to lead? You got to love it. Fade to black. Tonight, very special guest, Jason Quitt, is here. We're going to talk a little time travel. Tomorrow night, Shaw, the Loon Witch, for our annual Shaw show. I got to tell you, Shaw is so much fun, and the last couple of years with her have just proved to be some of the most extraordinary and fun evenings that we have all year on the show. And it is going to go down. Tomorrow night, you guys are spoiled. John Rappaport, Shaw, tonight Jason quit. Jason, he is uh, he's a multidimensional time traveler. He's experienced the past, the present, and the future. From ancient Egypt and Atlantis to our possible pre- and post-apocalyptic future, he has been a witness to our unrecorded history. In his book, Forbidden Knowledge, co-authored with Bob Mitchell. He discusses who we are and how mainstream archaeologists, scientists, and historians have been swept up in a fabricated storyline. Our world isn't what we think it is. It's a world once fought and protected by otherworldly and dimensional beings. An ascension process is taking place on our planet today that is awakening our consciousness to peer behind and beyond the veils of our known reality. We are once again remembering our place in the universe as multidimensional beings who are having a physical experience right here on planet Earth. His website is thecrystalsun.com, and I would like to welcome for the first time to Fade to Black, Jason Quit. Jason, good evening. Thank you for having me, Jimmy. It's uh, great to have you here, and we need to start. You get the first-time guest disclaimer, and that's that's a cool thing. Next time you're on the show, you don't get it, but you get it tonight. And that is, it's just you and I sitting on my couch having a conversation as friends. And where we start, we start. Where we end, we end. But we're going to end as friends. Are you ready to do this? I am ready. All right. Um, first things first. Let your hair down. 
and 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 let's do this. There's so many things that I want to discuss with you, but I need to start here. What is the definition of a multi-dimensional time traveler? It means that I am not physically taking my body with me. So this uh, dimensional time travel has to be done um, once I have an outer body experience, then I can leave, and then uh, there's no such thing as time or space. Do you, when you do this, how do you record it? Do you remember things and write things down? Do you videotape the experience and you talk in real time? How do you do that? How do you remember everything? Um, well, it is very difficult to remember a lot of it, um, but a lot of these journeys are extremely vivid and um, extremely powerful that even memories that I have doing this as a child are still um, etched into my mind. What do you do? Uh, you know, I, I know you deal with this a lot, but you, you know, you get the skeptic or you get the guy or the girl that goes, you know what, come on, right? Um, how, how do you handle that and what's your response to them? Um, I just really believe that what I am experiencing is a natural human experience. And um, there are many people that I found out that have this ability. Um, most people get shut down as children, and some people get reawakened into this um, in their early adulthood, which happened to me as well. Um, and, you know, I just share what I've learned or what I've saw um, and you know, it makes a really good story. <laughs> oh, that, that it certainly does. No doubt. Yeah. Uh, you're the guy to have at a party, right? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, um, how, how does one and how do you, or how did you, uh, start to perfect this and fine tune it and, and look at it as, you know, a talent and, uh, an ability. Well, it first started to happen to me when I was about 22 years old. And I actually didn't really know or understand what was happening to me at the time. Um, I started to have experiences of uh, sleep paralysis. And it was happening almost every single night to me. And as this was happening, I started to feel uh, presences in my room. And this just, it just really freaked me out. And, you know, you could feel them entering the room. You could feel them walking around the bedroom. And basically, you're just frozen on the bed, and you're screaming in your head to wake up. So it's not really a, a fun experience. But one night, um, I just had enough of this, and I was just shaking so hard to wake up that I actually uh, popped myself out of my body. And as I rose up above the bed, I can actually see myself laying in the bed. And at the foot of the bed was a very tall being. Um, it looked like a, um, a giant shadow, um, almost like a grim reaper, and its head was almost touching my ceiling. It was a very tall being. And um, this I was not expecting. Um, at that point in my life, I really thought that I just died. <laughs> you know, right, I right. see myself in the bed. I see the grim reaper in front of me, and uh, I just got very scared and I got sucked back into my body and woke up. And it was at that moment I realized that there is definitely something beyond the world that we know of. And it lit this fire in me. It's the only way I could describe it. I was so curious about what I experienced that I just wanted to experience it again. <laughs> and, yeah, right. Well, oh. how do you repeat that? Well, you know, Ever since I left my body for the first time um, in my 20s or 22, um, that sleep paralysis stopped that night. But it opened something up inside of me where I can put myself to sleep or I could put my body to sleep, but I could keep my mind <clears throat> completely conscious and aware. So what I would do is at night I would go to sleep and put my put my body to sleep and once my body was asleep i would just shake myself out like i did in sleep paralysis and at first 
you know, it wasn't anything spectacular. I would come out of my body and just kind of float around my room. Um, you have, uh, you're not really a body. You're more just like a ball of energy. And uh, what I found very interesting is that you could zoom in and out of things. So if I wanted to look at a cup or a crystal at the other end of my room, I could just go right into that crystal and keep zooming in and in and in or zoom out. So it was a, it was kind of a learning process at first. And eventually I ventured, you know, outside the bedroom and eventually outside the, uh, the house. Um, and after I started to do this, I started to have, um, I think I got attention from different beings. I'll put it that way. And my journey started to change at that point where um, I would be visited at night and I don't know who these beings are. I still don't know who these beings are. Um, I couldn't really see them. They just, they looked invisible, but they had a humanoid form. Um, But you can clearly see the outline of them. And they would literally just reach in my body at night, pull me out, and um, they would shoot me up into outer space. And I would be able to see the planet, and we'd go pretty far up uh, so I can see the whole planet. And then they would direct me to a point on the Earth, and I'd be shot down to that point. And basically what they were doing with me is just dropping me off in this location to experience whatever was going on in that environment. And when I first went there for the first journey, um, the first thing I realized was this is not the planet or this is not the earth that I remembered. Um, Immediately I thought that I was viewing some type of future events. And what they would do is they just leave me to absorb whatever is going on in the scene. And when I'm done absorbing, um, I'd be shot back up into outer space and then shot back down into my body and then I'd wake up. And at first these experiences, there was no communication whatsoever. It was simply a taking (laughs) and dropping off the experience, pick me up and put me back. Did you, uh, a couple of uh, quick questions before we move on. Sure. These entities or these beings uh, that you were around, um, were they the same ones each time? Did, you, you know what I mean? Did, were you able yes. to identify them? Yes. The ones that took me um, on these time travel um, outer body experiences, it seemed to be the same type of being. Um I really don't want to use the word gray alien, <laughs> but because because it was invisible, I couldn't actually make out um, what it was, but it had that type of outline similar. How do you think you looked to them? Do you have any idea? Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got a better, better way yeah. to add. <laughs> Did you ever look at yourself in the mirror? I could look down and see my arms. It's it's very hard to do. I don't know why it's hard to do. Right. But when I look down and, and see my arms, it's basically, um, I don't want to say uh, almost like a shadow, but you see uh, different colored lights going through uh, the appendages and the fingers, um, almost like you're invisible, but you have this energy grid going through you. Wow, that's crazy. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, in a cool way. I, you know, that's just crazy. And so now, even though you had appendages, and I like the way that you put that, you couldn't reach out and grab stuff, right? You could only observe. Only observe. And what um, about, only observe. And what about your feet? Were you ever touching the ground or your feet are just there? You don't even know if you had feet probably. But you know what I mean? You weren't walking is, is where I'm going. Actually, um, in the first, um, I'll say, time travel experiences, when I am placed in that environment, I'm literally myself. It's like I have a body. I'm stepping on the ground. I can feel the wind. I can hear the sounds around me. I'm totally immersed in this environment um, like I am there physically, um, but I cannot interact with the environment. It's almost like I am invisible in that environment. Right, right. Now, what uh, uh, you you're around people, 
right? But they can't yeah. see you. No. Could you make a sound? No. It, man, no. man, I want your gig. <laughs> I want your gig. <laughs> I want, well, you need to I want to check. A stomach for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. Let's 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 check this out. I am uh I am full fully engaged right now. All right, so let's let's go back. When um uh when they uh, okay, I'm just going to ask you direct. When they were taking you Right. That's that. It, it was almost like uh, an instructional course. Right. This was some guidance and and letting you know kind of what's going on. But it was uh, it wasn't um, serious. Right. This was just. This is how this is how you do it. Um, I would say I had no idea what was going on. Right. Right. Um, right I right. didn't know it was a crash course at the time. Um, because I really had no control over it. And earlier I said, you know, you know, you need a really good stomach for this because um, those first initial time travel experiences, which I do believe uh, was into the future, um, they each journey was progressively worse. And, you know, they showed me pretty awful things. Um, and, you know, I'm just... Before this happened, you know, I really didn't know anything about, um, I would say, the conspiracy world or aliens or, or things like that. I was just living a normal life, right? And suddenly, this is happening to me. <laughs> so, right, right. It was a lot. It was a lot to take in, and this was around uh, 2002. So this is uh, pre YouTube. So I couldn't just jump online and watch a million videos about this subject. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um. Now. What did you what did you observe that made you think that it was the future? I mean, you, you couldn't I, I'm assuming you were looking at a calendar. You didn't have the ability to ask somebody what year is this or what day is this? So what was it that you observed that you uh, thought it was the future? Was it the cars, the construction, uh, you know, houses? Was it that or was it something else? Um, well, the first one they took me to, uh, they took me down into a bunker system. So, um, I didn't think they had bunkers in the past. So this kind of put me in somewhat present or future. And then also, um, on a couple other missions or a couple other journeys I went on, um, I viewed, um, I would say soldiers with weapons and tanks and it was quite advanced in what the military would look like today or future. Oh, okay. We're going to get back to that. Let's uh, let's go to, you said, you know, you're out above the earth, right? And you could see mm -hmm. yourself going back to a certain spot on the earth. So you knew generally where you were going, right? Yeah. Whether it was yeah. Egypt or China or Germany or the, you know, the, the, you know, the United States, you're up in Canada. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? So you could see approximately where you were going. Where were these bunkers? What country? Uh, the U.S. Okay. I was taken in the U.S. multiple times. And do you know what part of the U.S.? Um, well, there's, I'm not very good on my geography, but uh, it seemed to be um, mid-east of the United States. Mid-east. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, that kind of area, but you don't know. But but the I, I I don't know. Okay, fair there enough. There's no no lines of borders or states in space. <laughs> well, trust trust yeah. me. If I was dropped yeah. like that, I wouldn't know either. All right, I would. Yeah. I would have to look for like a Cracker Barrel restaurant or something, <laughs> so I would know uh, <laughs> what state I was in. Um, okay, so you're dropped into these bunkers, and uh, when you're when you're coming down, the bunkers are underground, so you yes. and and you're able to just pass through and 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 you could first, yeah, first I was dropped on the surface right. to observe what was happening on the surface. Um, and then once I, you know, took that environment in, then I was 
uh, pulled underground. And and uh, the first. Well, what, did, what? Yeah, what did it look like? Um, it was very, very strange. It's something that I've never seen before. Um, the sky was very, very red. Wow. Um, it almost looked like the sky was on fire or something had happened to the sky. And uh, the earth was completely uh, burnt and scorched. Um, trees, I noticed, they were just, you know, black cinders. Um, and, you know, it just looked like a desolate landscape. Um, so it was definitely not the earth that I remembered. And um, once I was immersed in that, um, I was just pulled or I was just pulled right through the ground and I ended up, it almost looked like a backyard bunker. It looked like something somebody built themselves. And there was a, a man in that bunker and it looked like he was suffering. So, you know, the impression that I got was, you know, whatever had happened, you know, this bunker didn't protect this person. Hmm. And then once I had those thoughts, I was shot back up into space and shot back down into my body. Um, looking back at that first experience, do you have any idea what year it was? I mean, hopefully it wasn't like 2017. <laughs> yeah, these beings, they did not discuss or tell me anything, which is extremely frustrating. And, you know, this happened more than 10 years ago. Right, um, right, right. <laughs> And, you know, I've asked psychics and channelers and so many people about this, and they, I can never get an answer from anybody. And now take me to, uh, if you could, the very next time. Okay, so you did this one. And yes. was the next experience similar, and what happened? Uh, the next experience, I would say was the worst experience they ever took me on. Um, you know, they, um, I don't know if their goal was to shock me or to see how much I could take, but um, basically what they did was they dropped me in a prison camp. And it was, uh, it, w it was a prison camp for children, I'll just say that. Um, and it was the same scene, actually. It was an open-air uh, prison camp, um, cement walls with... Um, the wires on the top there and um, it was open to the air so I can actually see that red sky again so I knew they were showing me another scene of this type of event and um, that's when I saw these soldiers and these tanks uh, which look very much like future or present and um, basically I had to witness um, some pretty nasty brutality um which i really don't want to explain on the radio mm -hmm. but um when i came back from this journey i was literally shell-shocked like <laughs> i was i remember i was white as a ghost and um i tried talking to some people about it and i, I couldn't even get words out of my mouth at that time and i think i scared a couple people back then too trying to discuss this. Right. Did your family know about this? Did you talk about it with uh, your family? No, okay. no, absolutely not. I like, at least I was sane enough to know that, you know, this is crazy. <laughs> if, I, yeah. if I would tell people what's happening, then they're going to look at me very differently. Why would they have, were you able to, I mean, why would they have children in a prison camp? I mean, or, or are you just using those words because that's what you, you know, I mean, were they prisoners or were they there for other reasons? I mean, you know, why would they have children? Do these children have <laughs> special abilities? Was there a reason why they, they needed to be corralled and imprisoned? Um, I really don't have an answer to that. Um, I don't know why they showed me that in the first place and um, why it was children. Um, the thing that I found interesting is that these children were of various ages, anywhere from, let's say, like, um, I don't know, 8 to 15. And um, they were just wearing normal, everyday clothes, like they weren't wearing any um, prison attire. Right. It just, um, so I don't know why they were there, 
but um, I think it was a dire situation at the time. Could you um, see? Could you see the guards' faces? Yes, you could. And so, yeah. were they uh, normal? Yeah, they they just looked like um, your everyday soldiers. And anything special about their uniforms, you know, that would maybe tip off that this was in the distant future or this was, you know, next week? Um, interesting. Um, now I'm actually going back and trying to think of this. Um, it was it was almost like it was um, some of them were in uh, black uniforms, almost like a SWAT team. And then some of them, um, the ones that were with a tank and they had uh, the machine guns, um, they had almost like um, um, the camo type um, prints, um, but they were they were lighter. They weren't um, they weren't the green type. They were more like, um, oh, I don't know. Um, I'm not a military guy. I don't know these things. Right, right, right. Um, Tad. But, but it wasn't like green. It was almost like uh, beigey. Right, right, right. Like a desert, desert camo. Yeah. Very interesting. And now, but you are a guy, so you know, uh, you know, the American, the A1 Abrams tanks, you know, you know what those look like. Were they, yes. were they like that or was it a different version? Um. I have to look that up online. It just looked it looked like it was a very modern tank. Right. Like not something you see from uh World War Two movies. It was very modern. Yeah. I'm just hoping this is fifty or a hundred years from now, you know. <laughs> um and the red sky was interesting. Could you um in this state, can you smell? Um no, I didn't notice any smells. Oh, can you smell? I, but can you smell in this state? Um, I actually, I don't remember or recall any smells, so possibly, no, I, I didn't smell. I, you've never uh, had the opportunity to maybe in the future go into an Italian restaurant and smell spaghetti. You know what I mean? Could you smell? <laughs> yeah. No, no, I guess I guess that's a sense I didn't have. Um, not that I could recall. Yeah, okay. Um, this is very interesting, and we're going to pick things up. We, I've got to uh, take a break, so let's go ahead and do that now. Our guest tonight is Jason Quit, multidimensional time traveler, and we're talking about just that. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. More with Jason right after this. Now, you can follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. Jason, what's your uh, Twitter? Um, it's Jason Quit. With two Just T's. Jason Quit. With, two With two T's. T's. Jason Quit at Jason Quit. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. I'll be right back. Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. The station that talks the net, KGRA Radio. Hello, I'm Katini, and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here, repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church. Fade to black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation, easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to angioprim.com. That's angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to angioprim.com. 
Trim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained AngioPrim consultant. Call AngioPrim toll free at 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Or log on for complete information. AngioPrim.com. That's AngioPrim.com. Find out how AngioPrim can work for you. Get the facts about AngioPrim at AngioPrim.com. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're of the Honey Brothers. Well, the <laughs> yes. We are of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full-range boomboxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this. It's amazing. It's just $129, and use the promo code JCRTWS, and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner. Go back, Lee Tappy. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. Across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. Welcome back, Fade to Black. Tonight, very special guest, Jason Quitt is here, multi-dimensional time traveler. We're talking time travel, our pre- and post-apocalyptic future, Atlantis, Egypt. Tomorrow night, Shah the Loom Witch is going to be here, our annual Shah show. John Rappaport is going to be here with his No More Fake newsroom. Now, back to Jason. Jason, before I go to the past, since we're, we think we're dealing with the future, right? I, and I hope mm-hmm. it's, but what about the far distant, fe- I mean, where did you have the opportunity to land and look around and see flying cars and floating cities? Um, yes. What did you, what did, <laughs> well, hey man, uh, this, this is where we need to go. What did you see? Okay. This was, um. What what I was told was that it was in the year 2700-ish, um, so far future. And what I was shown was that the history behind this future was that there was a war between two alien groups on the planet. And they showed me one of these groups, which I've never really seen before, but the only way I could describe them at, is uh, ant people. <laughs> oh, it wasn't like so an got, arm, got, it wasn't an army it, of Donald Trump's. No. Okay. No, I right. didn't see that. Okay, good, good, good. Um, but that would be scary. Yeah, that would be scary. Uh, don't worry yeah. about it. Uh, you let everybody up in Canada know that uh, everything is going to be okay. Now, what about the, uh, oh, okay, so no red sky. No, there was no red sky. And uh, basically what I was shown in this uh, timeline is that um, there was no government. Like the world had no government. And it was decided that um, the world would be run by this, um, I'd say, this artificial intelligence. And uh, basically, um, if I would call them people, the people were um, all connected to one another. It was almost like they had uh, telepathy or uh, they could access anything to anyone at any time using their minds. And uh, the most interesting thing that I 
witness there was um, they had very, very futuristic buildings um, that interacted with you. So as uh, I walk into the building, um, the building is now in my mind, and I could have a conversation with the building, uh, get news, uh, ask questions, uh, things of that nature. So it was almost like every building or every object had this type of um, interface, this uh, artificial intelligence interface in it um, that could communicate with you at any time. Um, and when I got back from that journey... Oh, no, 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 uh, no. You oh, don't get no. to come back yet. No, no, okay. no, no, no. We're going to stay right there. Um, <laughs> okay. did, were you able to... Uh, did you see people? Yes. And did they look like us? Did they? <laughs> I was going to say, did they look like you? But hopefully they didn't. Uh, because, you know, you're translucent. But did they look like us? Jason. Oh, we didn't lose Jason, did we? I see J Jason, you're still live. Uh, okay, hold on for a second. Hold on. Jason, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I guess they got to me, right? Yeah, man. That's exact. Dude, I didn't even hear a, a sound. It was just that 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 was pretty trippy. Normally, I have an indication of what's going on, but I got nothing. Okay, so did they look like us? No, no. Um, they basically uh, they didn't even have uh, hair, um, and they they were all wearing um, similar uh, clothing, um, and it was everything was very like clean, like almost like hospital clean. Um, uh, very whites and grays and and silvers of that nature. And and what about the ground, the trees? Uh, did you did you get a chance to explore? No, I, I actually didn't see any ground or any trees. It was just very much like a, a very futuristic city, very very uh, tall, almost like uh, glass metallic uh, uh, skyscrapers. Right. Um, and you can't interact. You could only observe. Uh, were, were things peaceful? Uh, you know what I mean? Was there hustle and bustle or people working? You know, what was what was going on around you? Yeah, I got a sense that it was very peaceful. Um, I got a sense that everything was very much in order. And, um, and the interesting thing about this experience is it was almost like I was flying through it. Um, I wasn't physically standing there this time like the other journeys. Oh. I was flying through it with um, – there was someone guiding me through this journey, and I had questions in my mind, and I would be telepathically uh, – the, the, answer, the answers to the questions would be put into my mind as I was going over the city. Um, billboards? Advertising, commercialism, uh, any anything like that? Um, I didn't see it um, overtly, like in people's faces. I think it was more integrated in their minds. Now I have to. Um, I brought up uh, flying cars, right? Um, and yeah. you know, I'm, I'm I'm kind of joking with that. But were there flying cars? Did you see, you know, trains, transportation, highway system, floating highway? I mean. Uh, what was that like? Were you able to see anything like that? I didn't see any any cars, um, and I'm just trying to remember if I, if I saw anything else. Um, I was. It's very strange. I was more interested in this whole ant people thing when I was doing this journey. Uh, what do you mean, but, ant, uh, What do you mean, ant people? Well, they were kind of get, trying to give me context of, you know, what I was seeing. And uh, it started, the journey started off with, you know, there was this war that happened on the planet and it was between two alien factions and they showed me one of these aliens and it just looked like a, a humanoid ant. Um, nothing like I've ever seen before. And then they showed me that this ant was somehow related to ancient step pyramids. Um, whatever that means. And then um, once they say the, the battle was over, um, they decided that there would be no more governments to run this society and that um, 
they were going to integrate this AI into everything. So that was more of the information that was given to me. And then they showed me these buildings and these people, and it just looked, it actually looked really, really awesome. And, um, and, and when I said I, I woke up from this journey, I was, I was actually really excited I, to be there and to see all this. Um, but, you know, till this day, I still don't know if I like the idea of uh, an AI integration into society. I don't, I don't know if that's the right path for us. <laughs> When you say ant people, are we talking about, you know, a, a, a creature that was, you know, five feet tall or or, or were uh, they small? No, I, I think it was around uh, five foot. Um, did they walk? This, did they walk upright? Yeah, they walked upright. Uh, it was almost like a humanoid body. Mm hmm. But they, uh, it was the skin that was interesting. It almost looked like elephant skin, but it wasn't gray. It was almost like a mauve, like a purple, uh, a, yeah, like a grayish purple. Wow. And uh, it did have antennas, and it did look like an ant. So, like the first thought in my mind was, "Wow, that's an ant person." Wow. And if you think about it. Uh... The uh, oh, I'm trying to think which Indians, American Indians here in America, uh, did the uh, uh, the ant people. Yeah, it was uh, it was the Hopi. Yeah, the Hopis. The Hopis did the ant yeah. people. Very interesting, man. Very interesting. Did you know anything about the Hopis or the ant people uh, before this trip? No. Did you? So, but no. but afterwards, you found out about it, and did you? Did you? you know have an aha moment like holy crap you know that's that's kind of what i saw in the future you know i i couldn't really find too much information on it uh, you know you just type in ant person <laughs> and uh i came up with the hopi legends about that the there was these ant people that actually uh took them underground uh to save them during some type of cataclysm how long how long were you there in 2700 not long. Um, I would say, um, well, it was during my sleep cycle. So um, it felt like 30, 40 minutes. It was just a quick kind of view in and out and back to my room. Um, I asked you about the sense of smell, um, but yeah. you do have the sense of sight because you can see um, and yeah. and you could hear. Could you hear? Yeah, I could hear. You could hear. Were um yes. did you hear No, what did you hear? Did you hear music? Did you hear anything in the background that sounded like music and what was that like? No, actually um I just um felt a sensation of flying, like going over a city and um it was almost like I had this inner voice that I could ask questions and receive uh answers. Um but you know what, let me back up a little because there's many different levels of time travel um, that I experienced. And you know, we've we talked about the first level, which is just um, you're an observer. Mm -hmm. You have no interaction whatsoever. You're just taking in a scene. Right. Um, there's a couple more levels to this that I've experienced. And one was you actually, your, your consciousness goes into another person. So basically, you have no control, but it's almost like you're looking through somebody else's eyes. And and then there's another level to that where you actually like get in, put inside another person, and basically you're completely there, and you have taken over this person's body. And you can control it. Yes, you could run around, and it's you. Now, was this done in stages? You know, you know what I mean? You had the crash course. Yes. Right? So is this done in stages? Is the fully controllable, you know, body that you're assuming um, and taking over, is that the final part of the journey? Um, I would say it was the most exciting part of the journey. And I could tell you that experience. Yeah, tell me um, about it. And <laughs> Was yeah. it was it a male body or a female body? 
It was a male, but it was actually a child. Oh, wow. Crazy. Okay, tell me about it. Well, let's start <laughs> with a the, little... <laughs> Let's start with the logistics part. Uh, what time and what place? Well, it wasn't even in this world. Okay. Okay, okay so um, there was a point in my life where I was leaving my body like 30, 40 times a night that I was conscious of. And basically what would happen is I'd go to sleep, I'd leave my body, a portal will open up in the room, and the portal looks like a black hole. It's about three feet in diameter. I get sucked through that black hole, and it, it sounds like very loud white noise or air when you're traveling. And it feels like you're going very far and very fast. Um, and then my consciousness is whipped back into my body, and I wake up. And I go, okay, um, that's that sucks. Like, you know, I don't have any memories of where I went. And this would happen consistently like 30, 40 times a night where another black hole would open and I get sucked into that one and go somewhere and I have no memories. So for over the course of many months, you know, I would always go to bed with the intention that, you know, my memory be taken on these journeys so I could remember what's happening. And one night it actually happened. So we go through one of these black holes traveling and I'm on the other side, I'm, I'm out in outer space, and I could feel this being behind me, and I could never see these beings. They're always just behind me and holding my shoulder type of guiding me. And in my mind, I say, where are we going? And the voice comes back in my mind, it says, we're going to Pegasus. And I'm assuming that's a constellation that we're going to, and you know, I see the stars and we're coming up to a planet, and the planet is, it's mostly an ice planet. Um, it was only green around the equator region. It was, the, the poles were very big in ice. Um, and I get taken into a building, which I later learned was a school. And I was put in a child's body. And I woke up in this classroom on another planet. I know it sounds nuts, but I woke up, I'm in this, uh, like I'm in a child's body and I'm just so excited because it's me. It's like Jason on another world in another body and I'm in a classroom and I start turning around to see all the other students and they were human, by the way, this was a human classroom. And I, um, I started asking everybody around me all these different questions and everybody just kind of looked at me like I've, nuts or something so they weren't talking back to me and I was disrupting whatever was going on um, so I just said you know screw this and I got up and left the classroom and I started to run down this hallway and the only thing I could think of was I need to find a library I need to find books I need to find something to look at and I'm just running down this hallway and I think I think I caused enough problems and I was yanked back out and, and taken back to my room. <laughs> wow. And how do you think you were? Um, I would say maybe um, eight or nine years old in right, that body. Right, right, right. Okay, and were you able to look out the windows? No. No, it was uh, it was like a closed classroom in a cl in a closed hallway. Right. I didn't actually see anything outside. How long were you there, Jason? <laughs> Probably a minute. That's how disruptive I was. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, now in in the classroom, and I know, okay, a minute, right? But did you get a yeah. chance to look at? You know, what was on the walls or the books or anything that you could relate to really quick and, and grab a, a memory of it? You know, drawings on you the know, walls, you know, anything at all. You know, it's maybe I'll have to go back into hypnosis, but it's so funny. It's like when this happens, when this happened to me, it was almost just like such excitement that I was actually doing this that. Like, I, I really did make a disturbance in that classroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. And um, now, the, the, when you entered the uh, the black hole or whatever it was, yeah. 
Could you, did yes. you have a sense of speed? You know, what did that look like and what did that feel like? Um, it really, it really feels like, um, like wind is passing by your ears really fast and it sounds like white noise and it's very dark, but it almost looks like a static, like, a like a, if you, if you look at the gray and black screen on a TV, that's static. Yeah. Um, if you just took the contrast like way down and made it dark, so it's like just like dark pixels. Now that's what it looks like when you go through this. The the time in the black hole, you're obviously traveling a huge distance. Do you have any sense of time there? How long does that take, or is it instantaneous? It's a couple seconds. It's a couple seconds, and then you pop out, and I'm somewhere in space. Okay. Did you ever do it as an adult? Into to an adult take over body, a, a yeah. body, right? No, no. That I'll tell you that experience hasn't happened again, and I hope it does because I'll be a lot more calmer this time. Right, right, right. <laughs> now, of course. And what about uh, uh, the middle stage where you've just got? Explain that to me again. How that works? Where you're just taking um, over the mind, or you're yeah, just? Yeah, well, you... it's almost like you're experiencing an event but you're experiencing it through another person. You're a passenger in the car. That's right. Right, right. Okay, so uh, what happened? Um, well, this this has to do with, like, um, so I, don't, I don't know if I want to tell this story. Cause, but, okay, so we were in a uh, – I was placed inside someone that was in one of these uh, uh, FEMA camps. And, you know, I don't like to use the word FEMA camp. I don't know if, if it was. It's the only thing I could relate it to is, is a type of camp. Um, and basically, um, there were people um, in this camp. Um, there were tents and uh, bunks set up. Um, and there was guards and everything. And um, the sense that I got in these camps was that um, the people there were actually uh, very relieved that they were there. They were they were very happy that they can be at these places. Um, so, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, if these people are happy to be here, then something awful must have happened so that, you know, they have shelter here. Um, but then, you know, the guards were not, or the military or whoever this was, there was almost no communication between the, the residents of these camps and the guards. Uh, they weren't allowed to speak to each other. Um, and I can sense that um, there was a lot of uh, built up anger and hostility, like, and even the guards were very upset too, um, that they couldn't speak and, and talk to these people. Um, but I just got a sense that whatever had happened, these people were happy to be there. The uh, uh, possibly they were rescued, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, whole families were, you know, was it structured like that? Yes. Yes, it was structured like that. And you know, I've told this before, and someone mentioned that you know, in FEMA camps, you're they don't they, they don't allow families to be together, but. I witnessed, or from my experience, um, there was family units together. Well, I mean, for the record, uh, you know, officially there are no FEMA camps. You know, nobody's been in one. Nobody's seen one. Uh, yeah, you know, so when 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 I hear comments like that, you know, coming from other people about to do, nobody's been in at a FEMA camp. Right? <laughs> so okay. nobody nobody knows they, you know, uh I FEMA camps, I I I appreciate your description because I it it it, it enables all of us to picture it, right? So I get that, right? A refugee camp and and what have yeah. you. But FEMA camps is urban legend. Uh, just purely... right. I, I like I say. I don't know what kind of camp it is. Um, no, you know, can, yeah. You know, continue, people talk about that. Yeah, and when that and which is my point. Yeah, can, can continue to use that description because I get it, and we all do. But when somebody else says, 
well, you know, they don't keep families together in a FEMA. Dude, you've never been in a FEMA camp, so stop, right? <laughs> Just stop, you don't know, right? So that's, that's right. you know, and you're okay if you use that in the future. You can borrow that. You can say, you know what Jimmy Church says, dude, you've never been to a FEMA camp. Shut up. You know, you, you can do that. <laughs> You can do that. Now, um, now let's, uh, we're going to be headed towards a break. And as you know, Jason, my favorite things that I talk about on this show, time travel being, you know, up uh, way high on the list, but also ancient history, uh, lost history, Egypt, Atlantis, um, and and all things ancient, go back Lee Tepe, you know, so we're going to go back there. And I find that really interesting i was uh with a group of people yesterday um on the set of uh, history channel and we're sitting around talking you know i think it was lunch taking a break and the subject of what would you do where would you go what would you what what you know if you could time travel and i was like oh this is great right so we all sat around and and talked about it and it was kind of strange uh, how things varied and and trip on this because through your experiences, you know, and now somebody said, you know what I would do? I would go back and watch the Wright brothers take their first flight. And I thought, wow, that's, that's interesting because most people, you know, uh, the, the crucifixion, you know, it, the, there's obvious things that, and you know, myself included, but to go back and see the Wright brothers, you know, make their first flight. I thought that was really interesting. And somebody else uh, actually mentioned that they wanted to go back and see the transition of what made man fight wars. If they could pinpoint that date and see what it was that made man kill man. I thought, wow. That's that's philosophical, right? <laughs> that's I mean that's a that's an interesting thing to want to go and do and it made me kind of wonder too. Maybe I'm just being selfish, you know, to go back to certain things and want to witness it. Maybe there's other profound uh turning points in history that would also be fun to witness. So let's do that next. Our guest tonight Jason Quit. Now you can follow Jason. It's not Jason Quit on Twitter. It's Jason underscore Quit on Twitter. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. We're talking time travel with Jason, and we'll be right back. Stay with us. to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk. Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRARadio.com ¿Qué tal mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carzanel, tiburón. Y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Work with your doctor when taking medications. Make Protovite part of your healthy lifestyle. Healthforliberty.com is your source for Protovite, a powerful nutritional supplement that's a true breakthrough for your health. Poor digestion makes it nearly impossible to absorb the nutrition your body needs. Protovite is a liquid multi-nutrient formula with patent-pending absorption technology and the highest quality ingredients to nourish every cell in your body. My name is Sandra White. Six weeks ago when I started taking Protovite, I was on 14 medications from everything for blood pressure to fibromyalgia. In the first 10 days, my blood sugar dropped 50 points and my fibromyalgia pain is gone. And so was 12 of the 14 medications that I was taking. I'm 66, living life and loving it. Go to healthforliberty.com right now. That's healthforliberty.com. Thank you, Protovite, for giving my life back. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is revolution. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution 
is on radio. Ciao. Fade to black. Tonight, time travel. Our guest, Jason Quit. Tomorrow night, Shah, the Loon Witch, is here. John Rappaport is no more fake newsroom. But tonight, it's time travel. All night long. Now, Jason, uh, and everybody's fired up, man. Twitter's out of control. The chat rooms are just smoking. And I need to ask you this because I've now seen this a few times uh, with everyone. Do you now have the control over what you are going to do and where you're going to go? Because it sounds like you haven't had much control, right? Or any at all. But can you control things now? Can you pick and choose? No, I can't pick and choose. I do have control sometimes. Um, If I really focus on leaving my body, then I could leave my body. But once I leave, I will be pulled to something. Um, and I don't know where I'm going or what I'm going to view. So there really, for me, I feel like there is still no control. Um, and man, but I love control, obviously. Yeah, that sucks. But, um, yeah, definitely, definitely. Can you pay somebody? Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> you know, you need to do, you need to bribe an entity, you know. I don't know what they yeah, would exactly. need. What, what could you bribe them with? You couldn't, you know, money's no good. Good pot couldn't do that right so what what yeah that sucks man that sucks okay well, I f- <laughs> i'm not making fun either man i i am you, you know exactly what i'm saying just imagine yeah 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 oh yeah but i i think for some reason it is i i don't know it, it is some type of um awakening or training or something um because you know every trip that I'm, I go on or every experience I have, there is some element of teaching in it or there's some element of, of information that, you know, when I get back, I really start thinking differently about how I see things. Have you been able to see things about Canada in the future? I mean, do you guys, uh, do you guys win the Stanley Cup, right? Do you, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't want to say this because I'm Canadian, but I haven't seen anything, and I'm guessing it's because we're just boring up here. I don't know. Ah, oh, but, no, 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 man. Canada is cool. <laughs> no, man. I've been, uh, I've, no, been, I, I've been to Montreal in the winter, man. I know what goes on up there. And I've been to Vancouver oh, yeah. in the summer, and I know what goes on over there. So, and, and you know, what, what goes on in Canada stays in Canada. We love Canada. <laughs> Now, yeah, no, I, I'm a, a true North guy here. Yeah, I hear you. And you guys are still pissed off about Wayne Gretzky, but you guys are going to get over it, okay? One day, you know, it, you'll see. It'll be the distant past. Now, um, I kid. I kid. These are jokes, folks. Okay, save the email. Um, now let's go to let's go to a couple of key events. Um, okay. uh, you went to Egypt. Right? Yes. Now, tell me, were you able to find out or see or witness how the the Great Pyramid was built? No. Oh. I did not see how, how it was built. I don't have that recollection. All right. But I'd like to thank Jason I... for being on the show. And... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what period? but I, I have I have a reason why they were built there you go okay talk to me to, re- to terraform the planet really yes how so the plan- how so the pl- the in the early history um, the planet was very chaotic something something happened to its orbit something happened to its wobble 
Um, it was not suitable for life. It was a lot of chaos here. And what happened is they did a pyramid network around the planet um, that stabilized the tectonic plates, stabilized the true north, and it set up some type of um, energy grid around the planet that was, um, when the pyramids were um, active, um, it was almost like there was a shield put up around this uh, planet. And um, I'm, I'm trying to think of how long ago the Earth, uh, the moon came here, but the moon is extremely important, important for life on this Earth. And it, it kept all the tides going. It kept the movement of the atmosphere. And um, that's basically, it was re-terraformed so life could exist again here. It stabilized the wobble. Yes. Interesting. Do you have any idea and, when, when, what year or when this happened? That, you know, Jason, I have yeah. interviewed hundreds of people uh, about the pyramids, and I have my own ideas, too, as well. But I've never heard that, and I find that extremely interesting. Um, well played, well played. What what year? Uh, what year uh, do you think uh, this occurred? Well, um, I know that um, some of the oldest pyramids um, that have been found, like in Bosnia, is about thirty six thousand years, and there's some ancient pyramids that go back, I would say, millions. Um, I went very back in time. And I, I can't even tell you how early this is because the, the Earth was, it, it looked like it was still primordial. It was very, the sky was dark and um, it, it was all, I call it like the fire world. There was like lava everywhere and you could see it glowing through the ground. Um, and there was, there was temples on the planet back then too. <laughs> and I just, I couldn't believe that there was uh, buildings, but they were like um, uh, almost like clay brick temples. Um, everything was very like a, a, a muddy red color. Um, so there has been some form of life here, like very, very ancient. And I'm thinking that um, these pyramid structures go back uh, hundreds of thousands of years, at least. Were, did you see any other, uh, uh, I understand those types of buildings, but did you see anything massive like, you know, cities or, or towns and, and, uh, and humans? Uh, what, was, what was walking around? Um, I'll just say, like, when I went back to Egypt and I was taken there by Toph uh, a couple times, and um, Toph is known in Egypt as the Ibis head uh, god, but to me, he just looked like an old man, uh, dark red skin, and he was bald, and he had a robe on. Um, but I, he took me to see Osiris, and it was very strange because Osiris is not like what he's depicted in the books. Um, he had a bull's head on a human body. And it was very strange because I was looking very closely at this being, and it wasn't, he was not wearing a mask. I mean, this was a definite hybrid being of, of a human and a bull. Was this in Egypt? What, what, what part of the world? This was in Egypt. Hmm. Bullhead. So yeah, it was a are you suggesting that? you know, Thoth and Horus and some of the other gods of Egypt that are represented um, in their art and sculpture were not, uh, uh, how do I want to say this, you know, artistic uh, uh, freedom, that this was possibly the representation of, of something that was real? Yes, that's what, I'm, that's what freaked me out the most is that it, these things were not masks. Like I really looked carefully and how this being was, was living. And it was, it was definitely a bull's head on a human body. What did you get a chance to uh, see the Sphinx? Um, the Sphinx. Um, not really. Um, 
my journeys to Egypt, I was always taken inside temples. So oh, I didn't really get to see the outside. Got um, you, got you. Okay, so you yeah. did you you didn't get a chance to see what colors the three pyramids were on the Giza plateau. No, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Okay. Um, it, it's almost like you know when when I'm taken, it's um, it's almost like you just wake up and it's like you're in this room. And it could be you're standing in front of someone that looks like a pharaoh, or you know it could be Toss guiding you down a, a corridor, and he's taking you to meet somebody. Um, actually, actually, Toss did take me outside once. Um, it now, was at nighttime, you, okay. and he took me. Um, it was like a marketplace, and there was people, you know, running around selling things. And he took me to this. Um, it was like a storehouse. Um, and it had racks of uh, scrolls, and he wanted to give me uh, certain scrolls uh, for me to have. Um, and there was like a uh, a keeper of the store, I guess, standing there helping us. Um, but I do remember it was at nighttime, and there was people like in a market running around, like a normal everyday ancient market. Now, if this was Thoth... Right. That yes. means, mm -hmm. well, I, 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 I've never been there, but uh, that means this could be potentially tens of thousands of years ago or longer. Yes. Right now. And but when you were there and the inside of the temple, uh, fresh and new, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Was it like that? Oh, it was, yeah, it was gorgeous inside. It was very luxurious, a um, lot of, um, you know, reds and whites and golds. Um, there was a lot of pillars, um, and the floors uh, were stone. Um, everything was very luxurious, I would say. Did you, um, the Egyptians themselves, you know, the human side of them, um, what color was their skin? Were they light skinned? Were they dark skinned? Medium? Um, they were a very, I would say, uh, red, tanned, um, uh, Middle Eastern type. Right. Uh, yeah, that, that's what. Uh, I remember, especially Toth, um, he had very, I would say, dark red skin. How how tall was he? Not very tall. He was, um, uh, well, I'm like 6'5", so I'm, I'm pretty tall. Um, I would say he was about 5'8". Now, uh, I, you know, um, I answer this as honest as you can, because I've seen so many different representations of his beak. Um, can yeah. you describe that? I mean, was it really long and thin or was it a bit thicker? Was it short? Was it pointy at the end? Was it cut off? Was it flat? And I know, no. you know, we see all these different versions. What did you see? Um, the toss that I know was just simply a man. Um, he did not have a bird's head. How'd you know um, it was him? Um, I, he told me, introduced himself. <laughs> Get out. Get out. Okay. All right. Now let's, okay, let's get down the, to the, the, the Toth nitty gritty. Okay. Um, yes. Did he build the pyramids? He didn't reveal that to me. Did he, um, did he actually author the green tablets, the emerald tablets, the emerald tablets of Toth? Um, I think, um, I think it was channeled through somebody. Ah. I'm not entirely sure exactly if he was the the scribe of it. The uh, the library it did any any revelations there? Tunnels under Giza uh, was the Sphinx. Since you never, you only went outside once, and you were inside of these yeah. temples. Were they connected you in some way? Yes, but but it's very interesting because what I got the sense of is that um, these corridors or these libraries, um, 
they're there and they're still there, but they're not physical. It's, it's, you have to go there dimensionally. Um, so it's like no one's going to go with a radar and say, okay, there it is. Even though I, I've talked to um, some Egyptologists and um, I've heard some crazy stories of Egypt where they have found entrances um, to these places. And when they ask to dig there, the government says, no, no, you can't dig there. Dig 50 feet away. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of uh, repression and suppression of, of knowledge when it comes to that. And um, I'm not sure if they know everything, but I'm sure that they know stuff that they, you know, that they won't reveal. I mean, there's a lot of reasons for that, but... I think first and foremost, there are secrets there that would let let us know that things aren't what they seem, right? Whatever that is, what, whatever that is and could be, you know, swinging off the Egyptian dogma, right, that we are taught and swinging off of that would, uh, would upset a lot of people, uh, including me. So I yeah. I hear you there. I hear you. Yeah. Now, um, well, what what else? Okay, how many times have you been to Egypt? Oh, um, back in the beginning when I started to do this, um, um, I didn't even get into this story, but uh, basically these beings that started to communicate with me, uh, they would continually tell me that I needed to heal myself. And that was my my main mission here in this life is I had to heal myself. How so? What, is that, what does that even mean? I, exactly. What does that mean? So I went to doctors thinking I'm dying because everybody's telling me I need to heal. Right, right. Of course. Of course. <laughs> and the doctors, you know, said I'm perfect, which was crazy because I didn't feel perfect. Um, uh, but basically, they started to teach me. Uh, they started to take me back to Egypt and teach me these different postures. And what would happen is I'd be brought into this temple and there would be this guy standing in front of me and he would look just like the statues, you know, it's just a, a very uh, tall person with uh, the big hat on his head. And um, he was wearing this kind of uh, skirt type of thing. And, um, he would just be standing in a posture and there would be no communication between us, but I knew I had to copy what he was doing. So I would just stand in front of this person and stand the way this person is standing. And when I would do that, it felt like something opened up above my head and this tingling warm, it almost felt like honey going through my body. Um, and it was very strong, very powerful, almost electric feeling. And um, I would wake up from these experiences in my bed, still holding that posture, still feeling that current of energy going through me. And then when I would change the posture, the energy would be cut off. And this happened on so many occasions that uh, it was almost like I was being taught again all these different postures. Um, to heal myself. And so I was instructed that I had to practice these postures um, as a meditation. And, you know, I, I really feel like they've changed and altered me. Um, my understanding of what I was taught is that the body is like a, uh, uh, a sacred geometry receiver and transmitter. And you remember those bunny ears on the old TVs where you had to kind of move the ears to get the right reception, the right down, frequency? Down here, down here in, in, the, in the United States, we still have them. You guys are okay. advanced up there. You guys have moved on. But down here, no, we still have uh, rabbit ears. Okay. So it's the same thing as the human body they taught me is that you, when you enter a certain posture, um, you're tuning into a specific frequency. And by doing that, you're building this energetic field around you and strengthening it. So you could change the postures and start building different energy fields around you, which it's almost like you're taking control of your own energy 
and uh, building it a certain way for specific purposes. Were you uh, able to? Okay, I, I want to go back to to uh, Toth real quick. Um, sure. Did he share information in history with you? Um, no, no, he did not. Um, did he tell you? Uh, you said that he he was he not a god then? He was just a he was uh, just a dude. He presented himself as just a dude, but his presence was extremely powerful. Uh, when he talked, any word that came out of this person's mouth, it's like the cells of my body were shaking every word he said. How do you even know? Was it what? What was he speaking? What what language? And uh, or how does how does that go down? Um, there's there's two ways. One is telepathic. So I could see him with my eyes, but I could hear him in my head as my own voice. That's one way. Another way is, which is really, really powerful, is, is that reverberating type of voice. It sounds like when we were walking down those corridors together, he wasn't telling me a history or talking to me. He was almost saying, uh, I don't want to say spells, but it was almost like he was singing mantras as we were walking or saying prayers. I, I, you know, it was a language I couldn't understand. But were you, were you every ever, word he sa said, I could feel my cells just going nuts. Man, man, man. Were you scared? Were you, were, have you ever been scared? Um, <laughs> you know, I should come back for a Halloween show and tell you the, the six years of dealing with entities. Uh, so, yes, I've been through a lot of scary events. <laughs> with, with, with Toth and his presence, were you cool with that? Yeah, um, I honestly, the, the only feeling I had was just, I was honored to be there in that time, in that presence. How many times have you um, been to Egypt? Um, in, the, in these travels, yes, um, I, yes, yes. I couldn't even tell you, uh, it's happened so often. Were you ever there before the pyramids were there? Um, like I said, um, I... I don't even know if I was in a pyramid. I, I was more of a temple. Right. Oh, yeah. That's what I meant to ask you. When you were in this market, I know it was at night, but what did yeah. you see? Did you did you take a look around and, and, and try to observe uh, where you were and, and what it looked like? I mean, what did, what did you see outside of this uh, marketplace? It was just, it was actually really basic. It was just kind of like tents and... Uh, I would say mud brick uh, enclosures. Um, it didn't really look too sophisticated. It looked like, you know, an ancient marketplace. Now, th there's a couple of other things. D did you see? Did you see anything? Um, you know, mechanical. Did you? You know, like wheels, carts, uh, chariots, or. Or was it more advanced than that, or or were th was there nothing there at all? Um, I did see um, wheels on carts. Uh, I didn't see anything mechanical, but I do know that if you go back a little further in time, um, there was definitely ships, and there were ships that would visit Egypt. How big were they? What did they look like? Oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. I've seen things that look like, uh, let's say, cylinders, spheres. Um, I, I don't know. Do you get a lot of, um, you would know this better than me, uh, a lot of sightings of the metallic spheres? Yes, of course. I've seen them myself. Okay. So, like, um, it was like metallic. It was, there were these spheres and they were these cylinders. Um, there's a couple of different shapes. Um, there was the classic ones with, um, I don't, I don't want to use the word sun disc, but very similar to a sun disc that you see in Egypt. And these were floating. These were in the sky. Yes. Very interesting. Very interesting. 
Um, we're going to take but, a, but not not often, not often. Right, right, right. They, um, yeah. Were they? Um, were they? I'm not sure if you could answer this, but but maybe you can. Were they from somewhere else, or were these things that we were just using here on Earth? I think both. And and why would you say that? Because um, I do believe that there was an even more ancient civilization before summer, before Egypt, um, that had their own technology here. And and what? And- yeah, exactly. Why would you say that? I find that interesting. Um, because I think that there was some remnants of that culture that bleeded through um, to these other cultures in the future, and that they had trade and contact with other races as well. Yeah. So you had ships that came from off planet, and you had ships that were here that were, um, I would say, constructed here. Did did Toth look like he was a pharaoh? Was he the leader, or was he just someone that was there? You know, I mean, obviously, some somebody spiritual and 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 with great knowledge. But was he was he the king of Egypt? I didn't know that either. For me, um, it was almost like he was my uh, guide. He was the one who took me, and he was the one who who leaded me to these places. Wow, that's just incredible. Were you able to witness any kind of ceremonies inside of these temples, like the sarcophagus yes. and what what those were used for? What did you see? Uh, well, I was. Um, you remember, I said I saw Osiris. Right. Um, well, I was taken down this corridor one night. Um, and, you know, Toth was doing his prayers or whatever he was doing. And he took me into this room and there was a coffin there or a sarcophagus. And he brought me over to it and he showed me who was inside. And it was actually um, Osiris. And, you know, so I got to look very closely at this head of his, which was a bull. And um, the weirdest thing about seeing Osiris was he didn't have any legs below the knees. It was almost like he had lost his legs. Um, So I still, that's a mystery to me. I don't know why Osiris doesn't have his legs. So just uh, below the knees. Okay. Now, man, we're, we're at a break here, but uh, really quickly. (laughs) uh, So just the torso and the head, right? Was that taking up half of the sarcophagus? In other words, where his legs should have been was that empty it was empty Hmm. like the the sarcophagus was opened what color was the sarcophagus and what was the shape do you remember yeah it was a typical gold sarcophagus that you'd see in a museum even more interesting you have no idea jason you have no idea let's take a break right here when we come back we've got to Go to Atlantis, and we will do that next with Jason Quitt. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, The Planet. Let's do this. I'll be right back. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Metal God on JimmyChurchRadio.com. KGRA Radio. Intelligent Talk. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on the smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. 
So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. If your home has hard water, then it's likely that LimeScale is clogging your pipes, damaging your appliances, costing you hundreds of dollars each year. You can eliminate LimeScale in the entire house with HydroCare products available at Wave Home Solutions. Easy and efficient with no maintenance, no salts, no chemicals, and no coils. And you can buy with confidence from Wave Home Solutions. Performance guaranteed. Just go to bestwater411.com. That's bestwater411.com. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of Fade to Black by just calling 605-562-4482. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Just call 605-562-4482. You can listen to me, Jimmy Church, on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Go back, Lee Tappy. secret i love ponies i really love ponies i'm serious i couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush why fade to black because you never got that pony damn it this is fade to black with jimmy church on the game changer radio network and kgra the global radio alliance Welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Jason Quitt, multi-dimensional time traveler. And that's exactly what we are discussing. Tomorrow night, Shaw the Loon Witch is going to be here. And you know what that means. It's our annual Shaw the Loon Witch show. It's Halloween. Cannot wait. Get ready. Tomorrow night, John Rappaport is also going to be here with his No More Fake Newsroom. Follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio, And you can follow Jason at Jason underscore quit. And that's quit with two T's. And you got to make sure that you have two T's, Jason, because there's a lot of other quits out there with one T. You know what I mean? And and that separates you, my brother. Now, um, Thank you. <laughs> it does. It does. It's great. Now, um, I've got a bunch of questions here, so I'm going to bang, and, and, and if they're strange, well, you know, strange to you, I mean. If they're strange or difficult to answer, I understand that, um, but let's let's get some of these out as quickly as possible. These are all from Twitter. One of them is uh, this. Um, have you been to the cemetery with the girl army. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but that just gave me serious shivers. Interesting. Do you have a comment? No. All I know is something, I felt something very weird. So I got to look into that. Okay. All right. And And get back to me on that. All right. And, okay. I, and I will pass that on. What were the alien races that humanity was at war with? You mentioned the ants. Now, the ant race, yeah. the ant people, were they at war with us? Were they at war with another alien race? Were we caught in the middle? Uh, you know, what was going on? Um, from what I was told, uh, we were caught in the middle. Interesting. What was the other race? Um. There's there's two other races that um, I've experienced. Um, one would be the reptilians, and one would be the Anunnaki. Were you? Do you think that you are part of a program? 
you know, a government program? Uh, Could this be something? Do you think that you were selected or do you know? Um, I would say that would be a pretty amazing program because <laughs> um, I have no recollection of any program or any connection to any military, even in my family, where I'm just some guy from Ontario. Right, 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 right. I I've been to Jean Kier, by the way. Um, okay, now, um, does why do you think you've been taken to some coordinates in some areas and not others? Yeah, it's a very interesting question that I've been trying to understand for a long time. And when I started to tell this story to people, when I released the book, um, I started to get emails from literally hundreds of people telling me that they were taken the same way and taken to the same places. So my only thinking of this is, you know, why are everyday people or special people uh, being selected to experience these things. Right. And the only the only thing I can think of is that um, it's a warning and a teaching. It's almost like you know they're showing me terrible things at the beginning um, to I don't know shock and awe me, and then basically they tell me that the future is not written in stone, that these are potential futures that we are capable of walking down and that we need to start to heal ourselves individually um, so we could alter the timelines uh, together. So um, I'm still trying to put all those pieces together, but it seems to me like these visions and these people getting woken up to these messages, it's, it's almost like a, you know, 12th hour warning saying this is something that could be potential in our future. What are we going to do to change it? Did you see cavemen? No, I did not see cavemen. Dinosaurs? No. Okay. I've seen, I've seen dimensional things that look very dinosaur-like. <laughs> right. Interesting. Yeah. Um, did you uh, understand the any a alien languages? You know, with the ant people, um, how how were they? I know that you mentioned something about telepathy and everybody was interconnected, but did they yeah. speak to you directly? Uh, yes. Yeah. So, uh, when an alien race would speak to me directly, it would be through uh, telepathy, and it's basically you would see them standing in front of you. And it would be your voice in your head. So you ask a question, and then you get the answer in your head in your own voice. Um, sometimes it's in their voice, uh, which is really interesting. But I would say the most interesting and the strangest experiences I've had is um, beings wake me up in the middle of the night. And you're never ready for this, by the way. It doesn't matter how many times this happens to you. Um, you know, you get woken up in the middle of the night and you open your eyes and there's like a, a giant mantis face in your, in your face, <laughs> like an inch away. Right. Um, uh, I've, I've hit it with a pillow. <laughs> so, cause you know, your first reaction is, is to jump in a uh, fear, but they, they try to communicate in an alien language and, um, I'm just sitting there confused and, and just repeating back, I can't understand you. Can you please speak to me in English? And then they look very confused. What about, so there is, what about, uh, I'm sorry, did I cut you off, Jason? No, I'm just saying that's a very odd experience. No, of course, of course. I, I, I'm sitting here, you know, trying to visualize, you know, all of this and I find it extraordinary. Um, what about the inner earth? Um, I've never actually gone down to see a civilization in the inner earth. I've heard many people tell me that there, there is, um, like I've gone down dimensionally through the earth. And the only thing that I found very weird down there is like, um, there's this, the only thing I could describe it as is like this living tar there's like this living tar and it's just very 
dark and nasty and I've had to pass through it a couple times. Um, I don't know where I was going in the earth because I don't have the memories to, to back it up, but I definitely remember a layer that was this weird tar stuff. Do you know your blood type? Yes. And? It, uh, it's AB. Wow. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't know if that means anything. It, 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 well, <laughs> I'll tell you in a few minutes. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, what about, uh, were you able to find out what happened with the Library of Alexandria? Did 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 Toth tell you anything about that and where those records uh, exist? Um, I f he didn't, but just from my conspiracy brain, I'm thinking that it wasn't destroyed, and that was a cover story, and it was taken somewhere safe. And I think those records are still at the Vatican. Were you able to find out anything about uh, any? Yeah, this is going to be uh, difficult to ask in a, in a coherent way. Were you able to, because it's direct, uh, to find out about any any uh, civilizations out there that worship uh, uh, Saturn? No. Okay. All right. No. I, 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 these these questions are uh, are coming at me pretty quickly here's another one when you travel outside of your body do you see your energetic connection to the source energetic connection uh, some people say that when you leave your body you see the silver cord going back to your body i've i've never seen that um and and i've never seen any cord going anywhere else um i'm just kind of it, I would just say energy or consciousness, and you almost have like a 360 view around you of the space. I'm, I'm just, uh, I, I've got more, but I want to get back to uh, our conversation and specifically Atlantis, your first time there. Tell me about it and how did you know it was Atlantis? I had um, a past life recall with uh, uh, someone I met uh, years ago and uh, you know, she was very gifted as well and um, when we saw each other we had like a spontaneous memory of the end of Atlantis and I know you know everybody talks about the end of Atlantis and you see the uh, I would say the land breaking away into the sea the waves and there was a lot of um, um, like I was in a ship, so I was like above the scene watching it take place. And they were trying to evacuate the city using just regular uh, ships, like boats in the water. And there was a huge amount of population that went on these boats. And the waves were just too high, and those boats were just destroyed. So most of the population was just taken out very easily, and there was very high tidal waves as well. Um, so I had that kind of spontaneous memory with this person, and we both had it at the same time. And it was quite emotional to see that, um, because a lot of these boats were filled with children trying to get off. Um, so that was that memory of Atlantis. And then now I'm going to go right back to the beginning, which I think is... It's a little more controversial. Um, now, this was I don't a, think this, any... right. That was a that was a memory that you had yeah. uh, with somebody, a shared memory, different yes. from different from time traveling. So different from time, absolutely. Okay, yeah. so let's go there. Okay, so um, so then I would consider that um, this would be also uh, not a time travel. Uh, thing this would be a uh, recalled past life memory. Um, is that okay? If yeah, I talk yeah I'm, about I'm, that? I'm I'm right with you. Okay, okay. Because the, the thing with time travel is sometimes it's like a physical time travel, and another it's it's almost you start to awaken and remember things that happened before. Um, 
which I guess in a sense is uh, a form of time travel. Right, right, right. But um, there was a story that uh, was given to me, um, like a history, um, and I really wanted to know the beginnings of Atlantis. And I don't really know how accurate this is because I can't find any history on it on the internet. Um, but basically what was told to me um, telepathically was that uh, there was a race of beings that lived um, somewhere else in the universe. I don't know exactly where, um, but they came from a planet very similar to Earth, but it had a lot more water on it. And these beings, their bodies were made up of more water. And um, for some reason, they had to leave or they chose to leave their planet. And they tra they traveled through a portal that was inside the ocean. So they went from their ocean in a portal to a portal that was in our Atlantic Ocean. And uh, a group of them came to this planet and they could survive underwater indefinitely. Um, they didn't have to come to the surface. They were just built that way. And eventually they started to come ashore to some type of native population that was here. And um, the only thing that I've seen that could corroborate this is you see the ancient Sumerian texts of it's almost like the half man, half fish coming out of the water. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically uh, what I was told is that they started to um, marry into the native population and they went back out into an island um, in the middle of the sea and over time the genetics of these uh, I'll call them uh, fish men and women um, they kind of diminished into the human population so there was a lot of uh, ceremonies and rituals about going back into the sea to um, uh, to go back to the portal of the ancestors, basically, and try to learn how to survive underwater. And um, I, th I think what they were saying is, like, this was the beginning of this civilization known as Atlantis. This must have been a long, long time ago. Yeah. To to interbreed, to adapt. I mean, are we talking? I, you know, is this a million years? I, how long was Atlantis here? I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. I, I I would put it back maybe half a million years. And you know what's interesting to me? I want to ask you this too, as well. My visions that I, you know, as I collectively in my own mind's eye, I've I've never done any astral or multi-dimensional or anything. I've never been regressed or anything. My visions of Atlantis only come from the people that I've interviewed in literature and 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 there you go, right? For folklore. Um, but my what I picture with Atlantis has never really been an island. I've always pictured Atlantis in uh, right like in the middle of Europe, you know, in in northern Turkey, you know, or you know, it's something like that, but not an island. That's me. So can I can I put another spin on it? Uh, well, you can, but let me, um, and okay. I'm going to let you come back to it. So, sure. but that vision that I have may not necessarily be Atlantis, but have, have you ever gone back to a large civilization of uh, uh, of a culture that was land based? You know, like in the middle of Europe a million years ago, something beautiful and 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 technological and advanced but it wasn't an island hmm. i would i would say that um not to my recollection okay fair I, enough. i did not do that but um to add to your point about being inland um i think that you know to try to find the location of atlantis is um wouldn't be so easy because I don't think it's one location. I think that it's, you know, what if we, instead of calling it Earth, called it Atlantis? 
So it was a worldwide civilization. Say that again. What if we didn't call Earth, or we call Earth, Earth now, but what in those days we called the Earth Atlantis? Got you. Now and it was a you. worldwide civilization. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I see it. I see it. And I understand it. Um, this comes in from Maria. She says, have you seen dimensional beings that are energy like light with a dark aura and the opposite image of dark with a light aura, you know, the border? Uh, yes, I have. Yes, I have. Uh, you, you see a lot of very interesting dimensional beings uh, because it wouldn't necessarily look like aliens. Um, it would look more like a humanoid, uh, let's say like a shadow with an energy field around it with lights going through it. Um, you would see beings that literally look like um, liquid metal or uh, standing columns of water. Um, or even like shining mercury, like just various different different things that I would consider dimensional beings. Were you able to, or have you connected Atlantis to Egypt? Um, from the memory um, that I shared with my friend, um, Egypt was one of the places that was a colony that it was almost like an outpost that they can go to. So a lot of these survivors uh, from Atlantis um, that could make it there, um, they went to Egypt and they also went to um, South America. Did you, uh, wow, wow. Okay, I need to, uh, I need to pause for a second and absorb that. Uh, that, that was heavy. Um, now, next question. Did you go and experience, did they take you to experience um, anything religious? And, and it could be anything. Obviously, we have the crucifixion, we have Jesus. But, you know, what about Moses, the Ark of the Covenant, um, yeah, the Great Flood, Noah's Ark? Did you witness any anything like that? Um, I would say I, I witnessed... When I say witnessed, uh, like I physically was there, I did witness a tidal wave. I don't know what time this was. Um, I can't tell you. I would consider this a great flood. Um, and I'm pretty sure there are many great floods, not just one. But this was a tidal wave that was literally taller than a, a skyscraper. It was so tall, this tidal wave. And I remember uh, it coming onto shore, and everybody is just scrambling to get into their homes or find shelter. And the only thing I could think of is, we're all dead in a minute, anyways. I mean, why are you, why are you running away? Come and enjoy the show. What what part um, of the world? You remember, you're extracted from your body. You're out in the yeah. space, and you're looking back, and you're placed. What part of the world did you see this in? Oh, uh, this is more of a memory than uh, an astral time traveler. Uh, this was just just like kind of you go to sleep and you wake up and you're just there in that scene. Right. right. And you're, you're just absorbing whatever this is. And, you know, some people will say, okay, that's a dream or that's a lucid dream. I have to tell you that these experiences far, far surpass anything that I would consider a dream or a lucid dream. It's just, it just shocks you. It really shocks you to be in these states. Where, where was, uh, going back to Atlantis, uh, this is from yep. Gigi, uh, where was it located? I know you mentioned the Atlantic Ocean, but where was it? Oh, where was it? Um... I I couldn't tell you. Um, I would even say Antarctica. <laughs> right. I know that's a strange answer, but um, the world was a very different place a long time ago. It's not the world that's here right now. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and when you go up and out, 
when you look back at yourself, you know, your body in the bed, do you see yeah. a dark void surrounding the room? Is that all empty space or is the house itself still there? Um, the house is still there, but what's very strange is that when you go out through the ceiling, it becomes almost like dimensional. So it's like sometimes I leave the ceiling and I'm not looking at my neighborhood anymore. I'm seeing like a primordial forest or I'm seeing like uh, waterfalls or, you know, I'm seeing a desert. It's almost like you're not seeing uh, the town. Changes. Right, right. You're not seeing the town that you live in. No. Right, right. Fascinating. Have you, um, and you haven't been able to do this like recreationally, you know, like we were talking about earlier, being able to do this on demand and, and you know, today I'm going to go check out Paris. It doesn't work that way. No, it, it doesn't work that way. But like I said, I could put myself in these states if I, um, let's say, I'm relaxed. And uh, actually, you know, the best time to do this is, you know, when you wake up really early in the morning, it's like three hours before you're supposed to get up and you can literally just go back to sleep instantly. Mm -hmm. That is the easiest time to leave your body because your body just instantly falls asleep. Your mind's awake and then you just shake yourself out. When was the last time you did this last night, a couple of nights ago, a couple of weeks ago? Oh, let me think. Um, I would say like, it's definitely this. I think it was this weekend. I think it was like Friday night. I did this. Um, and and what happened? Where'd you go? Uh, it was a very strange place. I, I don't know how to describe this, but basically, I was in some type of world, and um, there was something coming into the atmosphere, and it was almost like this. Uh, rust. That's the only way I could describe it. It was almost this rust powder coming in from the atmosphere. And when it touched your skin, it just burnt right through it. Um, so people were uh, panicking. And um, it's like they were showing me these, uh, <laughs> they were almost like mudras and uh, these poses of sending energy to the skin because I got burnt on my arm and, and the skin was exposed and I was uh, doing this meditation to, to heal my skin. Um, so that was a very weird journey last week. Have you, um, have you ever brought anything back with you such as before you answer, have you come back yeah. with a cut on your skin, right? That happened off in your journey. Have you come back with anything physical? Like, you know, I don't know, uh, a pen, a pencil, uh, you know, some object, uh, you know, have you ever come back with something? No, nothing physical. Um, but I've had some very strange things happen in the room uh, that would wake me up at night when I do these journeys. Like, for example, my bedroom where I used to live was just covered in crystals. I had crystals everywhere in this room. And Sometimes these crystals would literally shoot across the room in the middle of the night when I do these travels. So it's like uh, it would actually wake me up in the middle of the night. And when I would wake up in the morning when I could see what had happened, you know, I'd find a crystal on the floor and a dent in my wall. And I'd realize that that crystal that flew across the room was literally on the opposite side of the room. So it must have flown at quite an intensity to to travel that far. Now, uh, normally I would say good night here and thank you so much and let's do this again and what a great conversation. But I'm not. You know why? Why is that? Because I'm going to keep you here. We're going to take a break. I don't want to wrap up right now. We're going to keep this conversation going, Jason. And I'm not going to give you the opportunity to say no. So you're going to stay right there. Our guest tonight, Jason Quit, multi-dimensional time traveler. But when I come back, I've got, I'm going to go flat earth on Jason. And I hopefully I'm going to catch him by surprise. I'll be right back. Stay right there.
Vivica Fox here, and you are listening to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. Does your basement or crawl space have a damp, musty smell? Well, watch out. That's a sign of too much moisture and not enough ventilation. And that can mean increased mold growth and the buildup of harmful toxins and gases. Don't bother with a dehumidifier. It just circulates the same unhealthy air. Now there's a better way to remove these dangers and odors. It's with the computerized Wave Moisture Control Unit that reduces moisture and expels pollutants. We replaced our old dehumidifier with the Wave Unit, and in only three weeks, our basement is dry and the musty smell is gone. Wave units require no maintenance, no buckets of water or filters, and costs only pennies a day to run. Breathe better, live healthier with an affordable, no maintenance Wave unit. Call 888-618-WAVE 888-618-WAVE or visit MyDryHome.com MyDryHome.com Ride the wave Wave home solutions for a healthy, comfortable home What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full-range boomboxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this. It's amazing. It's just $129, and use the promo code JCRTWS, and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner. Go back, Lee Tappy. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Welcome back, Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Jason Quit. We're talking time travel. I'm going to go a little bit left and right right now, but we're talking time travel all night. Fascinating conversation. But uh, I want to remind everybody, tomorrow night, Shaw the Loon Witch is going to be here for our annual Shaw Show. Big event. Uh, It's going to be busy. We're going to do 100 phone calls at least. Get in early, have fun, and listen to Shaw. All right? And also, tomorrow night, John Rappaport's going to be here. You can follow me on Twitter, at Radio. You can follow Jason, at Jason underscore quit. All right, Jason, now, uh, you've heard of the flat earth theory, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, you can t- no, you're supposed to say yes. Mm-hmm. Doesn't work yes, on the radio. Yes, yes. Yes, okay. I have. All right. Yeah, Jason, <laughs> nod. Nod. <laughs> okay. Now, you've heard of the flat earth theory, and you were describing earlier, you know, uh, you know you're know, you pulled, you leave your body, you, you know, you're out, you're looking back at the earth. Is it round? <laughs> Let's put this to bed right now. From what I experienced... Is it in, round, Jason? Uh, quit playing. For, is it round? It's round. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. What do you make of, you know, when you go and you see the things that you do and you see these, uh, uh, well, you know, I'm not going to, you know, 
you know, call anybody crazy. But when you see these nutcases that, um, you know, profess the flat earth theory and, and the ideas behind it, you know, it, it's a flat earth, it's a disc and it's covered with a dome and we never leave it. And, and they can't explain anything, you know, about stars or meteors or, or how the sun works. You know, all of that stuff doesn't come into play. It's just that the earth is flat with a plastic dome on it. And you've witnessed the things that you, do you just laugh? Um, the, the problem is, is that I know some people that are very educated and very smart that uh, they, they really think that the earth is flat. And, you know, um, I can't really debate with them because only from my experience, you know, I've seen it as a globe I've seen it as a sphere. Um, that's my own experience. Um, so I don't, I try to stay out of that conversation because uh, it feels like there's no winning in that conversation. Yeah. And you know what? It, I, this is what I honestly think. They know the drill, man. You know, they know the earth is round. They just enjoy the sport of a, of a debate. That's all it is. That's all. They're just trying to challenge those that are on. If it wasn't the flat earth, it would be something else. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm, and I'm and, being serious. And, you know, um, Tesla, you know, he used the earth as a sphere to send waves across the planet. Right. Right. Of course. Yeah. And so, <laughs> I mean, that's the beginning of radio. <laughs> that, once again, yeah, I get it. You don't have to sell me on it, brother. It's just <laughs> that uh, it it is just so funny, and and it is so beyond, um, uh, you know anybody anybody that uh, uh, wants to respect their own selves knows the Earth is round, man. That's it. Open up your eyes, look around. You can see it. That's it. It's the end of the discussion. And so when somebody tries to lay this out and tries to be scientific and tries to prove and, and tries to go, they know they can't, right? They, they know that they can't. They, anything that they bring up to prove their point, oh, all of the airplane windows are curved, man. That's why when you look out, it, it looks curved. Dude, come on. Stop with that. And or or all of the airplane pilots, man, everyone they're all in on it. Well they say what? <laughs> I mean, it's just like crazy. It's just pure crazy talk. You know, I've been in I've been in big planes, I've been in little planes. I've been in planes with flat windows, I've been in planes with curved windows. And you know what? It all looks the same. <laughs> it's just like, and, dude. <laughs> and like I've I've flown around the world, uh, how many times? About five times. I've flown directly around the entire planet. Right. Um, um, I go to Japan frequently. I've been um, uh, to Israel, um, and you know you plot the flights and you go and. Um, I, I can't. I. But here's the thing: we're so small, our perception of reality is so minute to the vastness of what this planet is that to start to see a curvature of the Earth, you need to be well up in orbit. Yeah, I mean, you can get the sense of a curve. I mean, it, going yeah. out on on the empty ocean, you know, going out far enough where you're not seeing anything around you. And just look at, dude, it is curved. You can feel it. You can sense it. You can, you know, it. it it's the opposite of flat is what you feel, right? That, it just, it, 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 it's because it's round. You know, it, 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 it's just so funny. When um, uh, there's a couple of, uh, we'll move on, man. I'm just having fun yeah. right now. But, <laughs> but it, it's so funny. Dude, NASA photoshops everything don't you know that every video every photograph everything that's ever been done is photoshopped well what about before photoshop oh they painted it in oh i get it what about when a yeah. go when a gopro camera gets fired up into space on a balloon oh no gopro's in on it too oh they're all in on it yeah every camera maker every lens everything ever 
ever they're all in on it oh okay dude all right you're just like did you ever, <laughs> just, did you ever hear uh, the story of the uh, someone will have to correct me online but it was a sony camera that was released uh about five to ten years ago did you ever hear that story yeah, yes i have. Uh, yes did, with so they could they started to take pictures and they can actually see ufos in the background of their family portraits yes and they recalled all those cameras. Right, right, right. Now, that's possible. Yeah. <laughs> I'd buy that story way before yeah. way before I buy the Sony only builds cameras that photograph a curved earth right? <laughs> to fake the flat earth. And this is, this is what's really funny. When somebody says, well, you know, man, the reason why it looks curved off in the distance is because a telescope and binoculars, man, make everything round. And it's like, okay, so you hold this basketball, hold this basketball up and go two miles in that direction. I'm just going to look at you through this telescope. And you're telling me the basketball is going to go flat, right? It, it, it would be the opposite of what. And and how come your head is still round, <laughs> dude? Explain that to me, and we're all good. But have and, you? Uh, oh no, go ahead. Sorry. No, it, it's just that uh, uh, the it, it doesn't hold water, right? The all of it, all whatever they say, whatever it is. It's just wrong, right? It, and and it's, it's it's too easy to uh, to pull apart. It's almost as fun to to pull it apart as it is to listen to it. I don't know. They're both uh, very funny to me. Funny, funny, funny. Dude, it's a conspiracy, would... man. It's a conspiracy, man. It's really flat. Well, what about gravity? Dude, explain gravity. Dude, it's a magnet, man. It's a magnet. Well, how about things that aren't? Made of metal. Well, you know, they suck that stuff. That suck. Dude, stop. It's just like I can't take it anymore. It's just too easy. Too much fun. All right. I, I would say, uh, did you hear Stanton Friedman's uh, debate with the flat earthers? Oh, dude. You know, that was, uh, you know, what you know, what was wrong with that is, um, uh, first off, you need to, a, a guy like Stanton Friedman, um, you need to have mad respect from him out of the gate and just, yeah. and, and to put him in that position because you think it's funny or you think that somebody's going to be embarrassed like Stanton or the flat earther and, and doing something like that with somebody that uh, should have the utmost respect from everybody is just plain wrong. Now I listened to a few minutes of it. And I, I, I it's, it, it's just uncool. And I want to move on from that. That's uh, infuriating. <laughs> you know, okay. just infuriating. Um, so, um, but um, uh, what I do want to uh, uh, talk about with, uh, uh, without letting some things go, with um, the interdimensional side of where we are, and the possibility of not only multiple timelines but uh, multiple dimensions, what do you what do you know about that? And does that explain some of the things that we do see, such as UFOs or ghosts or spirits? or things that shouldn't be there uh, and, and then are gone a second later. Um, what, how, how do you start to explain that kind of stuff? Um, I, I see all the paranormal as being uh, multidimensional or bleed-throughs. Right. For, exa for example, um, let's say I'm in my bed and I feel something walk in my room. I can't see it. And it sits on my bed, and I feel it sit on my bed. You know, so you're like, oh, my God, there's a ghost there. Or something's there. Right, right. If, if I were to leave my body, I see them perfectly. So I have to be, I can't use my physical eyes at that point to see them. Um, so I, I definitely think that we live in a multidimensional world, and we are multidimensional beings, um, that we can access these other layers of existence. And on top of that, 
from what I've experienced is that we live multiple lives in multiple places and multiple dimensions at the same time. And how, okay, this is great because now we have the Mandela effect, which is, you know, it's taking over the world right now. Is the Mandela effect um, the result of some incorrectness in timelines? Is somebody from the future coming back and altering what we are doing here? And or is the Mandela effect just our mind, you know, not working correctly and we just have bad memories? Um, I want to say all the above, but the uh, many years ago, I was told um, through some of my contacts that in this period of time, um, there are many timelines that are merging together as in we're making certain choices and we're actually merging different timelines together. And, you know, I was told this years ago and it was a very interesting concept and I didn't quite understand it. Um, So people that are coming forward with the Mandela effect and, you know, some people have a memory that uh, Nelson Mandela died in prison and and most people remember that he became uh, the president, you know, and uh, it was, it was very joyous. So it's like, are those people from another timeline or are those memories from an alternative timeline that has bleeded through into this? Are we now on a more positive timeline and maybe an alternative self or an alternative reality is going down that negative timeline or a non-beneficial timeline? Um, So to answer your question, I think Together as a group consciousness of humanity, I think we are making choices as a collective group to change and alter timelines and merge parallel timelines as we go forward in our experience here. Is that done with intention or by accident? You know, we don't know that we're doing it. Right. I I don't think uh, we actually are aware of it. I don't think we've reached the stage that we know that we could alter our reality or project another future that we can all walk towards. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I don't think we've reached that maturity yet. Well, okay, so when you were in 2700, oh, by the way, was that as far in the future that you have ever been, 2700? Have you gone beyond that? um, The the problem is, is that I'm usually not told anything. Right, right. So I'll right. just I'll just see things, and sometimes it's so advanced. Like I see a lot of spaceships um, flying, and they're just so crazy looking. And you know, I don't know if I'm on Earth or another planet or far in the future because nobody is giving me contacts of where I am. Sure, sure. And 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 how could you find out? I get that. But when you were in 2700, was there any indication? that they had mastered time travel at that point and were able to physically, the physical self, go back and forward in time? That information wasn't given to me, but I do have a suspicion that Nikola Tesla had a way of doing it back uh, in the 1930s. Hmm. And I think that led to the Philadelphia experiment. Um, so I think we've been trying to mess around with that for a very long time. Yeah, uh, physically. It, it, yeah, it's it, it it's possible. Um, uh, we, we always have this issue. I, I do with the Philadelphia experiment in in two different context and you're the guest on the show and what I have to say doesn't matter uh, to the audience but we have the Philadelphia experiment as an experiment for you know making ships invisible to German radar not invisible disappear right that was the project that was the goal lots of electronics were loaded onto this these ships and the degaussing of the metal and and so forth um, and then maybe things went too far and 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 other things happened with from were a result of that experiment in degaussing the ship and massive amounts of electric current and 
so forth. We have that, or we have the side of Einstein and Tesla and that technology and actually uh, doing something else that had nothing to do with you know, trying to make ships invisible to radar. I don't know if that's urban legend and and or if it's real. I don't trust anybody. So either either version of that, right, can can be true. But going on that point about time travel, you know, the physical side of time travel, um, you are not able to alter because you can't physically touch or anything. You're there as an observer, so you cannot alter. A timeline you can't create a paradox you don't have that ability but with the Mandela effect it appears that somebody is going back and altering timelines do you understand what I'm saying yeah and I have a, a very close friend who's very into this Mandela effect and basically um, his belief of it is that whoever is doing this is using humor to wake us up so they're choosing things that are light and airy uh, that wouldn't really scare us. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's like, I could see that using Captain Crunch as an, you know, and, and we could deal with that as opposed to, you know, taking out Hitler. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to be fine. I'm just, I'm being serious. I mean, that, that would, um, the, the examples of the Mandela effect that I have uh, been able to look at in my own mind with my own experiences, I don't know what is going on. I don't want to think that I'm losing my mind or my ability to keep accurate memories, but I have memories of things that now apparently aren't as I remember them. And it's not about Berenstain or Berenstein bears and, and, and whatnot. No, these I'm talking about my own personal memories. And then you go back and you look um, at uh, the historical record, whether it's Wikipedia or, or you know, what, whatever that you have uh, at your disposal, and you find out that you're just plain wrong, right? It, that's disturbing to me. And I don't know how to to figure it out or how to answer it. Because when somebody says, hey, the Mandela effect is real and our timelines are, have been altered, and not for everybody, but for some, then you start to look at, you know, who who gets affected and who doesn't. And are these timelines, like you say, merging? And that's a, that's an interesting thing. And and I think as we move along here, it's only going to get worse. And the examples of the Mandela effect are going to be uh, multiplied and they're going to get stronger. And then we're going to get to the point where uh, we are going to have something that needs to be answered in in a big way. I, I agree. And um, just to add to it, uh, the friend who I won't mention their name, they're a, they're a famous film producer and uh, they know film like the back of their hands. And one of their favorite movies is Moonraker, a James Bond movie with uh, Jaws. And he says that the whole reason that Jaws turns good in this movie is because he meets the pretty girl that right. has braces right. because he has the teeth. And when you watch that film now, she doesn't have braces. Yeah, yeah, so, that the, that's the, mess, dude. That is messing with me so much because I. And so the movie doesn't it doesn't make sense now. Yeah, I remember that girl smiling and she had braces and he smiles back and he falls in love. Right, he's soft. He he turns soft. I remember that. How can that not be? <laughs> that 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 is. Oh man, that messes with my head. I don't know if I've I, I could have somebody look at me straight in the face and go, "Dude, no, she never had braces." You don't remember that because that's simply not true. I mean, what's next? Dorothy didn't have ruby slippers, right? They were blue. You know, I dude, <laughs> I just don't need this. I don't need this complication in my life right now. I, I was just starting to get stuff straightened out. And when I heard the Jaws thing, I heard that last week for the first time. And I'm serious, man. I I, I nearly walked into a wall. 
Well, I, my question about this whole Mandela effect thing is, are people in other countries with different languages and customs also experiencing changes in their reality? Well, I, I would I would suspect that that everybody is, you know, mm -hmm. and 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 what we need to do, and it is taking off. The Mandela effect is a phenomenon right now. There's no no question about it. But what we need to do is to make sure that you know anybody that can understand the question gets asked the question. You know, is there something in your life? And allow them to look at the examples, right? And so their memories could be stirred. And oh yeah, oh I I get it, right? And and just see if this is a global thing, and if it is cross cultures and and cross continents and so forth, because I believe that everybody has been affected by it. Because just like you said, this this Jaws thing, that's trippy. Okay, I'm looking at a picture of her right here. Okay, I, I can't tell. Does she have braces in this picture? She's definitely got braids. Huh. Somebody get me a bigger... Okay, you know what? This is how you do it. Search Google by image. And that's how you do it. All right. Yeah, okay, here we got a bunch of them right here. Okay, James Bond, Jaws, girlfriend. That's what you search. Okay, let's see what we have. Uh, Mandela effect memory. Yeah, here we go. There's lots of it here. Okay, and apparently she, yeah, she's got braces. She does have braces. Yeah. Now, but in this other picture, she doesn't. Well, maybe that's because she's an actress that's got the braces removed. But here, she's got braces and glasses. So the challenge that my friend told me was he had a VHS copy. And he immediately took the VHS copy and put it in and freeze-framed it on that scene. Right. And he said there was no braces on his VHS, and he freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here she's drinking, she's drinking, she's holding up a glass, and she's definitely got braces here, no doubt. All right, Jason, when's the next book coming out? What are you working on now? Um, well, right now I'm starting to work on a book on Algonquin uh, shamanism, and I don't know if I'm supposed to be saying this, but um, there's a, a very powerful medicine man here um, in the First Nations up in Ottawa, and um, he's agreed to uh, work with me on a, a book telling the history and uh, the practices of the Algonquin people, which I think is just needs to come out. Yeah, th and thank you so much uh, for the amazing conversation tonight. And when the book is ready and you are ready, come on back. We've definitely got to talk a little shaman. All right? All right. Thank you, Jason. Did you have fun? Oh, yeah. Great time, Jimmy. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. Great conversation. You are the best. And uh, when you're ready, come on back. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Jason Quit, everybody. Yes. His website is thecrystalsun.com. Fade to Black's executive producer is Rita Kamarian. Show is produced by Hilton J. Paul, Mark D. Kovar, LJ3, Renee, Mark Dunbar, Jonas. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Bob. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vito, and Mark D. Kovar. Fady by Dale. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldridge. Intro, Spaceboy. Spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. Syndication, KGRA, The Planet. Thank you, Jason Quit. This broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2016 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at jchurchradio. Email is jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. Everybody be safe. Go Beckley Tappy. Tappy.